What's good, Super Mario? It's your boy Sui. Yes, we're back with another video. Y'all check us out. Listen, Vegeta versus the Greek gods. It is not fair. Dragon Ball versus mythology. Listen, I kind of feel like at this point, we're kind of picking on Dragon Ball characters. Well, I mean, it depends, though. Like, it really depends. Like, which variation are we talking about? Because there's a bunch of variations of mythology in different series. So, I'm not sure which one this person is using. Um, but I'm not going to say Vegeta just outright slaps because he could destroy a planet. Because they probably have crazy feats. But, let's say I used... Uh, Zeus from the blood of Zeus on the Netflix series, right? That variation of Zeus isn't really that strong because they don't have planet busters. They have people who could like, you know, cause havoc, wipe out all life on a surface, but they can't really destroy the planet. If Vegeta, somebody like him came in like, boop, they would have nothing to do. They wouldn't have nothing to stop him. So who knows? Anyway, Let's check this out. The Greek gods. Even if you've never looked for them, they've appeared in something you've watched or played. From God of War, to Hades, to Percy Jackson, to Record of Ragnarok, to literally yeah. hundreds of more series. They See, are I just mentioned the Blood of Zeus, and I forgot Records of Record. I said Records of Records. Records of Ragnarok, yeah. Without a doubt, the most popular and well-known pantheon of gods in all of history. Just like any other work of fiction, they can be power scaled. So today, I thought I'd put the gods of Mount Olympus up against the gold standard of power scaling. Could the main 12 gods of Mount Olympus defend the earth from a sane invasion consisting of Vegeta and Nappa? The only way to find out is to get- Why are we limiting? Like that means that they can't be that strong then. Because if you got a limit to just saying Saga Vegeta because he's that strong, then yeah, they can't they can't be that strong. They can't be that strong. Hold on. Oh my stomach. Get started, but please make sure to like, subscribe to support the channel and know when new videos come out. As I've talked about the power scaling of the Saiyan Saga plenty of times, I think it's only fair to talk about the power scaling of the Greek gods first. If I didn't make it clear, we're talking about the 13 main gods of Greek mythology from the original myths themselves. The big three of Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. Listen, I'm gonna just say that sometimes words can be misconstrued, right? So their powers can seem something more than what they really is based off, you know, what certain people say. I'm just saying. Whereas for the Saiyans too, but we visually saw what they did. With them, it's kind of hard. Oh yeah, they definitely destroyed. So, well, actually no, it's a, I think it's about the same. But if it's from the original, who knows? I don't know. We about to see. The fuck? What happened? Along with the other gods in Mount Olympus of Hera, Demeter, Aphrodite, Athena, Artemis, Apollo, Ares, Hephaestus, Hermes, and it's a toss-up between either Hestia or Dionysus depending on the interpretation and which myth you're looking at, but ultimately it's not going to matter. A lot of these series I mentioned earlier that adapt these myths add their own material that drastically change the capabilities of the gods. That's what I was saying, right? Like, somebody picks up the mythology, adds a bunch of new stuff to it, give certain gods certain powers that they never had before, and now we're talking about a completely different god. The same god in name, but like an over-exaggeration of their powers. Yeah. Having them range to potentially beyond Universal in series like God of War and Saint Seiya, while other series That's are far less impressive than that. Even with the original sources of Greek myth that have been preserved, there are obviously inconsistencies and many issues regarding translations not agreeing with each other. But in my research, I hope to give a wide sweeping and hopefully nuanced view as possible. But again, we're talking about several thousand year old stories here. To begin, unfortunately, most of the Olympians don't have any direct feats by themselves and are arguably fodder combat wise compared Oh, so if that's the case, if they met somebody like a Vegeta who could just blow up a planet just because he felt like it, then what are we really talking about? What are we what are we really talking about? He's already faster than light. 
massively faster than light at that, can destroy multiple planets at will with no help of another Saiyan to do so. Um, yeah, like, he could just, we saw him do it before. <laughs> like, he, he was in deep space with Nappa, stepped out his space pod, and then proceeded to blow up that blow up that bug planet. I said bug. Whoa. To some of the others, leading to them being pretty much a non-factor in the grand scheme of things. Most importantly, though, is that every single god is inferior to Zeus by a large margin, arguably to the point where he could solo the rest of them if he so chose. To the point where he is all even Hades, because I heard that Hades is still like was he was supposed to be way stronger than Zeus. Right? Because they're brothers and whatnot. He's the youngest. But I recall Hades being way stronger than Zeus. And Zeus should have been the one to rule over, you know, the underworld. But, you know. Powerful in comparison to the rest of the gods. Thus, by establishing the feats of weaker gods, we can establish where Zeus is casually by extension. So, for a pretty easy baseline for top tier gods, myths repeatedly describe Poseidon as having flooded the entire earth, creating an ocean that, quote, did not have a shore. This easily puts him at high multi-continental level. This is further made consistent by other high tier gods, as his brother Hades is stated to shake the earth itself three times just by shaking his head, which, once again, can be calculated as a multi-continental feat, depending on how strong the earthquakes shaking the earth are. But we can do better than this multi-continental baseline. In a battle with Apollo, who thus should also be maybe relative to this level, it's stated that it was a very real possibility that Poseidon was going to lever out the gear of the entire universe to the point where his water would burst open the earth itself and flood Tartarus. So does this mean that the gods are all universe busters? Not necessarily. You see, it's important to understand that these myths are, surprisingly, kind of old, and that the people who made these stories and using these terms did not have the same level of understanding that we did. So when they say that these characters are universal, it's from their understanding of what the universe Universe is in ancient Greece, Earth was essentially thought to be the center of the universe. Yes, I was just about to say that. So, like, when from those peoples back then, right, in their time, they highly believed that the Earth was the center of the universe, which we know as false. We're not even the center of the universe. Our solar system is not the center of the universe. What well, the center of our universe is probably like a black hole or something. Like a massive, 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 massive. It could go on for forever, right? To us, from our um, perspective, right? It's a massive black hole. And we're just swirling, rotating, swirling until we reach that point, I guess. Get there, but you know, yeah. And that stars were not objects identical to the sun points of light that sat along a firmament at the edge of what essentially was the solar system. Now, like, when I hear stuff, like, when I hear this, it's like, it sounds so incredibly stupid for, for them, right? It sounds incredibly stupid from them, thinking that there isn't those balls of light, isn't other stars, but they're points of light that sits at the end of our solar system. What? <laughs> Let's just say that even the best understanding that the ancient Greeks had of the solar system was really off. For example, they thought the sun was only about six times larger than the Earth, and some of them even thought it was smaller than the Earth. While wow. in reality, it's more than a hundred times larger. They also thought it was. What you know what you know what it is because they didn't have the technology to see into space or have droids. I said droids. Drones, space drones to go into space to take pictures of the sun to see that the sun is massively a hundred times bigger than the earth. Crazy. Far closer to them, making the scale of the entire solar system and thus the universe only a couple million miles across in total. 
Now, I've seen some people say that the Greeks thought the universe was about 79 million miles across, but either way, this means that these universal statements actually really translate to the gods being anywhere from star level to large star level of power, Yeah, they actually are universal. Some argue that these feats are still universal, because in some myths, universe is referred to as infinite. I think it's very likely that this is just calling it very large, as even just oceans and the planet itself in these same stories or other ones are referred to as boundless, and that in the same myths, universe is described as having very specifically four measurable corners, a center, and a shape that can be replicated, which lends credence to the idea that it is not actually infinite. Still, I do want to focus on Zeus and his power specifically, because all Zeus got is lightning. We saw Vegeta throw out a fireball against Goku. We're not scared of no lightning bolt. <laughs> He's kind of just him. Like I said before, he consistently is stated both by himself and by others as being easily above every single god combined, including those not just on Mount Olympus, like Gaia and Aranos. Pretty much every feat I've mentioned before of the lesser gods, Zeus has recreated and met. And some. He's flooded the earth, shook the earth with his lightning in his battle with the giants, shook the heavens, and staggered Atlas. The same guy who's. I'm not gonna lie, bro. When I was watching the blood of Zeus, Zeus looked kind of mid because he couldn't even fight a giant. He couldn't even fight that giant. He had to die in order for him. Vegeta would have just blew him up. Who's that holding? Is that the universe? It can't be. Capable of carrying the weight of that universe. In one myth, he defeated both the monster Typhon and Gaia, essentially at the same time. Oh, wow. Gaia being the entity mm. that essentially created the universe and everything in it. Zeus has also outright beaten his father Kronos, who in the past had beaten his father Uranos, who is the living embodiment of the sky. Even blatantly, Zeus's thunderbolts are described as being capable of burning everything in the world down to its poles, according to some translations of Roman poems, which did technically come after, but I thought I'd mention it. As for Hack's abilities, it would be impossible to list everything the gods can do. They all have various kinds of elemental manipulation, can shapeshift, and many have degrees of illusion creation, mind manipulation, and soul manipulation. The Olympians are all also essentially immortal, with most godly entities in Greek myth really only being capable of being sealed rather than being outright killed with all this but like if that's the case right you can't kill them why do we always see them dead like oh, like so if that's the case how did chronos die i mean he's a giant but he's one of the most powerful things in, in existence in their realm of existence so it's like so how did zeus die being said, would they be able to stop the Prince of All Saiyans from conquering the planet? I don't think anyone would disagree that during the Saiyan saga, Vegeta is absolutely at the bare minimum a planet buster. Multiple yeah. characters tens and dozens of times weaker than him have destroyed the mood and arguably threatened to destroy the planet. The real question becomes how far beyond planetary can we get this Vegeta? There are a few metas. With his power level of 18,000, Vegeta would be at least a planet buster almost two times over, based on El Manga Legendario's statement that 10,000 can blow up a planet. Beyond that though, Vegeta surpassed his father as a child who was capable of blowing up three planets simultaneously. Assuming that all these planets are just the size of Earth, which is... Well, I mean, you can destroy it in a single shot, such a small planet. Oh, but that wouldn't be satisfying. I want to show him the one to prove me. I don't think that those planets were like the size of Earth, though. Because if they're calling Earth a small planet, which it is a small planet. But if they're calling Earth a small planet, I don't think those three planets were like small. But if we assume that they are, then I guess... But what happens if they're just large planets? So, like, you can't really assume if they're small, but you can't really assume if they're large, too. So, like, it's like, it's, uh... It's considered a small planet by Dragon Ball standards. This attack from King Vegeta is dwarf star level in power. Yeah. Vegeta would likely be around twice as strong as this in base, 
as King Vegeta's power level was somewhere unquantifiably greater than Bardock's, who was almost 10,000. However, in his grade 8 form, Vegeta would multiply this power level by another 10 times, putting his power level at 180,000, and his strength at arguably small star level. Of course, the other Saiyans, like Nappa and Raditz, would just quantifiably scale off this level of power with their own power levels, with Nappa being at 4 and 40,000 in his forms, with Raditz being at approximately 1.5, and 15,000 respectively. Of course, in the case of especially early Dragon Ball, none of the Saiyans have much in the degree of hacks besides the basic property that key control at high level brings, like flight and key blasts that can destroy matter on the atomic level. For speed, at a bare minimum, all three Saiyans would be faster than light, as they would be faster than the top tiers in original Dragon Ball multiple lines over, which each have multiple arguable light speed feats, and it's really whichever you want to choose to say their light speed. Either way, the Saiyans at full power, especially Vegeta, would be reaching speeds hundreds of times faster than light. So, with all that being said, will the Saiyans conquer Olympus, or fall to the might of the Pantheon? Like the title of this video alludes to, pretty much everyone besides Vegeta and Zeus are largely irrelevant. Nappa and Vegeta should easily defeat any of the gods who don't Damn. in some way scale similarly to Zeus, immediately removing more than half the roster. I say this, right? We don't really have, like, their speed feats or their reaction speeds. Like, that's a lot of things. But he did state that, like, the original gods, if you use original source material and then we modernized it, they're not really much of a threat. And, they again, they haven't fought beings where, like, somebody like a Nappa or a Raditz are present in their verse. Like, they don't even know what that is. Like, they will assume that they're kind of like gods in a way. Because of how strong they are. Because they they only seen regular humans. Aside from Zeus, though, the only god who's arguably at their star level of power is Poseidon, and maybe Hera and Hades, depending on some interpretations. Even then, though, there's only a chance they're at this level, while Zeus has direct feats and scaling that put him there. So really, who wins this? Zeus or Vegeta? I'm going to say right now, I'm leaning towards... Zeus, in a way, based off, like, if this was just Vegeta in general, yeah, Vegeta just slaps automatically. Vegeta slaps easily. No contest. But this is super early Vegeta. And I want to say that it's not fair, but I'm just... We, we got to, like, massively, massively, massively decrease Vegeta's power level to even have him fight Zeus. Because if we gave... Vegeta God Key, oh, forget about it. Zeus does actually have the advantage in power, being at his potential peak of a large star level, but Vegeta at his peak is only small star level. However, Vegeta is massively faster than Zeus. The gods simply don't have faster than light scaling, as things like time frames and distance quantifications don't exactly exist in these myths. At best, they might be relativistic using things like the movement of the sun or other celestial bodies, but that is a big might. The gods do also have an advantage in hacks like their immortality, but by that same token, these myths don't exactly take into account how the gods could handle an atomizing key blast when the most powerful thing they could imagine at the time was a bolt of lightning. However, yeah. this analysis has been of great ape Vegeta versus Zeus. This power gap becomes even larger if Vegeta is just in his base form, putting Zeus's strength another 10 times higher than the Prince's. It's very likely that while Vegeta could blitz and fly around Zeus faster than all of the gods, a single bolt of lightning is absolutely erasing anything that would remain of the Saiyan race. So, there you have it. Even when you take my most critical interpretation of the mm. power of the Greek gods, while the rest of the Pantheon might fall short, Zeus would be able to defeat them, at least before they unlock Super Saiyan. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I, I even say this, right? I say Vegeta, when he's on the brink of getting Super Saiyan, is where he he can possibly beat Zeus. But, you know, that's another time for another discussion for another story. Another discussion for another video. Anyway, y'all, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and smash that like button for your boy. You want more. If you want more videos like this, you know what to do. Subscribe, hit the like button for your boy. It's me, your boy, Sue. We're out of here, y'all. Peace.